Hi, I'm Pete from North Atlantic, and today I'm going to show how we use CopyFlow Gold uh, to export text from this Quark document uh, into a, a computer-aided translation system, uh, translate that text, and then create a new Quark document with the translated text. Uh, CopyFlow Gold eliminates the need for uh, cutting and pasting. It exports everything into a single file and uh, really facilitates racket, rapid document uh, disassembly and, re and reassembly. Um, if we're, well, here I've got a, a Quark document. And we can see a number of spreads, lots of different text flows. This is taken from a, a textbook, I think. Um, lots of discrete bits of, of uh, material here. Uh, when we're using CopyFlow Gold, um, you'll see it shows up in its own menu item here. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is, is set up the preferences, and that's found over here in the Quark preferences. I'll go down and select CopyFlow Gold, and I'll see the items re pertaining to it. Uh, we're going to leave the auto naming pretty much. We leave all these pretty much as they're set. We want auto naming to be in page sequence. That means the exported text file will be in the same order as the uh, material in the Quark document itself. We're going to work with text only. We want Unicode um, UTF-16 because we're going to show a little Japanese later. Um, and I want inline tags on. Uh, CopyFlow Gold adds the ability to export and re-import uh, inline or anchored text and picture boxes. So I'm going to save my settings here. And then the next thing we want to do is auto name the frames. Uh, so here I'm going to go select auto name. I'm going to give my names a little root here and then click OK. And CopyFlow Gold will go through and name, in this case we can see there are 42 different stories. Um, it's a good idea at this point to save the Quark document. What we're doing by doing that is uh, saving the names in the, in the Quark document. Um, that way when we come back later to do the import, um, we're sure the names are already in place in the frames and the associations with the names in the, in the tag file will work a lot simpler. Uh, then we can do the export. Just click export. It'll ask me where I want to write uh, this tag file. That's the format I've chosen to export in. And I'm going to say uh, Quark 7 demo okay. exported text. OK. And it's, that's done. It's very quick, as you can see. I've chosen the single uh, express tag file here, which is Quark Express tags concatenated into a single file with some enhancements for the anchored. Um, text boxes that uh, CopyFlow Gold adds, uh, but I could have chosen any of a number of different formats. A uh, single tag file is the most complete and probably the most compatible with uh, translation systems. Now I go and I'm going to use SDL Tag Editor here to, to open that tag file. Uh, so I do that just by saying file open and point to the tag. Um, and I've done the translation already to skip that step set uh, that step rather using uh, translation memories um, I've gone through and translated the beginning of this text into Portuguese we can see the translation segment here in, in English and then in uh, my very poor Portuguese so when we're done with that we've done our translation or some of it then we can say save target as and I'm going to put this into another folder here, a uh, folder for importing Portuguese, and just say save. And notice that Tag Editor saves that as a, a new tag file uh, compatible with CopyFlow Gold for us. Then in back in Quark, I can flush the contents of this just for demonstration purposes. Import uh, the translated text then. And here I'm pointing to the folder that contains the tag file. I click OK, and we'll see the text uh, come in. Um, CopyFlow Gold expects to find a tag file with the same name as the Quark document in the folder uh, that you've selected as your import folder. If it doesn't, then it'll throw up another dialog and ask you to uh, find the uh, tag file explicitly. So here we can see that with the formatting in place, we've got the Portuguese in place of the <coughs> the um, English, uh, at least for the beginning paragraphs. I'm going to flush this again. <coughs> And I've got some Japanese that I've prepared. Again, just a few frames of Japanese. 
And in this case, uh, it, oops. In this case, I did not find a tag file of exactly the same name, so I've got to go uh, select it. Uh, yeah, someone put a JP extension in the file, reasonable enough. But then when I select the tag file itself, it goes off and doesn't import. <coughs> Um, when this, uh, you can see here now the Japanese, I had, I did have to change the font here. Uh, the font that the, we were originally in, I think it was Helvetica, this copy of the Helvetica font did not, um, have all the Japanese glyphs. So I had to go in and interactively change it to Kazuka. Um, but there we can see we've, we've imported Japanese as well. Okay, that's Coffee Full Gold. Thanks very much.